Hello, hello, it's Kimberly. I am coming live to you today because one of my friends and clients asked me a really cool question this week. She was wanting some advice on her skin and she uh, used a term, she's like, her name's Jessica. So Jessica, if you're watching, hey, hey. Um, Jessica's like, girl, I need some help. I need a recommendation. I'm sure, she said, I'm sure you've had a lot of your clients come to you with mask knee problems, which I thought was hilarious. Masks and face coverings, right? Because uh, maybe you're like Jessica that you've had, your skin has been impacted by wearing a face covering and wearing a face covering often. And it's true. It's just the reality that we live in. So I am such a geek about learning. So to answer her question with the best of my ability, I used what I already know and did a little research. So Jessica, this is primarily for you, but I know so many other people are probably right there with you in regards to having some of these issues. So there's usually two issues that come with wearing a face covering. One is that your skin tends to get really dry. And another is that you get clogged pores. So um, it can, wearing a mask or a face covering can definitely be hard on your face. So you would want to follow some of these tips. So the first tip is um, a gentle skincare regimen is going to prevent your, your mask or your face covering from causing skin problems. Um, and of course, we want to wear these social or not social, social distancing. We want to wear the face coverings to obviously comply with local law and reduce the spread of the coronavirus, right? So but that is going to be causing acne. Maybe your skin is peeling or you're getting itchiness or rashes, right? So number one, dermatologists recommend cleansing and moisturizing your face daily. And I know the benefit of that. I've had my business in skincare with Mary Kay for almost 17 years and uh, just turned 40. And I just see a difference with good daily habits. So washing your face and hydrating your face and using gentle skincare can prevent some of these problems. So making sure there are some tips on how to wash your face properly. So number one, use a mild and a fragrance-free cleanser. I always tell my clients, don't just use random hand soap. Like you really want to use a cleanser that's made not only for your face, but also for your particular skin type. Um, and how you wash your face can definitely make a difference. Here are your tips. Number one, again, use a gentle, non-abrasive cleanser that does not contain alcohol. Um, and if you need help selecting one, of course, I'm your I'm your Huckleberry because Mary Kay has five different cleansers, I actually think seven if we include our bar of soap, all of which are non-comedogenic. They are fragrance-free, oil-free, and do not contain alcohol and are suitable for sensitive skin, right? That's what you want. Number two, wet your face with lukewarm water. Use your fingertips to apply that cleanser, or you can use a facial cleansing brush, a gentle one. We have one as well. Using a washcloth or a mesh sponge or anything other than your fingertips can actually irritate your skin. So you don't want to like wash your face with a washcloth, right? And you don't want to, you want to resist the temptation of scrubbing your skin like with a washcloth um, or anything that's not made for your skin. Number four is rinse with lukewarm water. So you don't want to go too hot but warm will be good for your skin. And then pat dry with a soft towel when you're done. Uh, apply moisturizer if your skin is itchy or dry. And in fact, you should apply moisturizer no matter what, especially right now in the season of, of face coverings. It's, even if you have oily skin, I have so many clients that are like, oh, I have oily skin. And when I explain to them that you still need to hydrate, your skin actually will produce less oil when you hydrate then it actually makes their skin less oily. So be gentle when applying cream around your eyes. You don't want to pull and tug. You want to use the ring finger or even the tip of your, sometimes the tip will have like an applicator. And one of our eye creams does have that tip. And then only wash your face twice a day um, unless you had some opportunity for sweating. So of course, if you're sweating a lot under the mask or the face covering, then as soon as you can get it off and, you know, 
that your that sweat when left on there and then pushed onto your face by potentially the face mask is what's clogging the pores. And so you would want to do everything you can to declog the pores, which I'll talk about. Um, so clogged pores would be one problem with wearing that face covering frequently and then also dry skin. So that's why we want to increase our moisturizer. In fact, um, dermatologists recommend that when you're when you're wearing a face covering to actually apply your moisturizer before you put that face covering on and then later when you take it off, especially when we're talking about wearing it all day. Cause I know some of you are in professions like Jessica where you're having to wear it constantly. So three things, if, if you can find a moisturizer with one of these three things then dermatologists really are going to say, Hey, it's going to be the best for you. Number one is ceramides and, um, Ceramides, we have ceramides in our TimeWise 3D Day Cream, in our Botanical Day Cream, in our Clear Proof Moisturizer, um, Hyaluronic Acid, that's a big word. <laughs> so that's found in um, our Deep Wrinkle Fillers. So that's gonna be like for your really dry areas, that would be a great uh, touch up type product if you have really dry areas. And then Dimethicone, which also can create a barrier that helps irritated skin. And that's going to be found in our repair day cream. So definitely Mary Kay's got you covered on your moisturizers. Then to prevent breakouts, you want to make sure your moisturizer is formulated for your specific skin type. So if you have oily skin, which means that when the weather is hot and humid, like your skin gets, whether or not it's hot or humid, your skin gets oily. You want to have a gel-based moisturizer. Again, the Botanicals is a gel-based. We also have a gel moisturizer. Um, and then the Clear Proof is oil-free. And then based upon if your skin is normal or combination, then again, this TimeWise Day Cream would be a lighter weight moisturizer for normal or combination skin and still anti-aging with sunscreen in it versus really dry skin. That's where you would go back to the repair. So make sure you ask your... Mary Kay Beauty Consultant, uh, if you want some help figuring out which moisturizer is going to be the best for you. And if you tend to have breakouts, of course, uh, two chemicals are typically um, going to help you clear up breakouts. One is called salicylic acid, um, but you do want to be careful that you don't, um, salicylic acid can then also cause irritation to your skin. If, if you put on that salicylic acid, which is a chemical, it's chemically going to strip the dead skin, it also can irritate your skin if you leave it underneath that uh, mask, right? So it's kind of a difficult, it's like a catch-22. You're like, well, I'm using it to get rid of the acne, and then it's it's also making my skin overly sensitive. Um, and then the other is um, your lips. Your lips can be really, oh, sorry, salicylic acid and then benzoyl peroxide. Benzoyl peroxide is the other ingredient that's typically going to uh, clear up bacteria on your face and be really good for preventing acne and clearing up the current acne you have. Um, and we do have both of those types of ingredients in our, in our clear proof line. So the second tip is protect your lips. So we have the most amazing shea butter balm. I love the butter balm because it's just intense moisture with of course shea butter and it's not going to uh, cause your, cause you to be feeling addicted to this product. And so after you wash your face, apply lip balm. Before you put on your face mask, apply lip balm. And before you go to bed, apply lip balm so that your, your lips stay hydrated. Number three, skip your makeup. If you can skip your makeup when wearing a mask, it's just going to be, your face is going to feel a little bit better underneath the face covering. But if you do really need to wear makeup or you feel more confident with makeup on, make sure that your makeup is non-comedogenic, which just means it's clinically shown to not clog your pores and oil free. And a little tip, a plug for Mary Kay, of course, you know, I'm going to say that is that all of our Mary Kay foundation products, our primers and our liquid foundations and our CC creams, they are all free of they're all non-comedogenic and oil-free and fragrance-free. So they're super healthy. Your skin can breathe. So if you do need makeup, we got you covered. Number four, try avoid. Avoid trying new skincare products that can irritate your skin during this time. Uh, wearing a mask, even for a short period of time, makes your skin more sensitive. So if you want to reduce your skin problems, don't try anything new and harsh. So things like chemical peels or intense exfoliation, retinoids or retinol, those types of things are very effective, but they can cause your skin to be more sensitive. And then you're putting this mask on, which makes it worse. So if you haven't already been using things like that, like a chemical peel, a microdermabrasion or retinol, 
don't start now. Like if you're wearing that mask a lot, don't start anything intense and harsh like that right now. Wait till you can do that when maybe you're not wearing these, these face coverings as often, okay? Uh, tip number five is use less. Use less if your skin becomes more irritated. Don't throw more product at your skin, okay? Um, so cut back and definitely cut back on products that can irritate your skin. Like I said, the retinols, even aftershave for men, the aftershave can sometimes make your skin more sensitive. And then again, the salicylic acid because it's a chemical. Anytime you're putting a chemical on your face, it's going to you know, create a little bit more of a sensitivity issue. Number six, make sure you're wearing the right mask. To reduce your skincare problems, look for a face covering that is snug but comfortable, soft, natural, breathable fabric such as cotton, fabric on the inside that feels soft if you have sensitive skin, and cotton material on the inside if you have acne or oily skin. Wearing a mask that offers a snug but comfortable fit helps to protect you and others from the coronavirus. So we want a snug fit across your nose, on the sides, and under your chin. Um, and that can reduce skin problems as well. If your mask feels too tight or it slides around on your face, that can irritate your skin. So you're also more likely to adjust a, adjust the poorly fitting mask constantly. And when you touch the mask, you're transferring germs to your mask and to your face. Fabric is also important. Avoid synthetic fabrics such as nylon, polyester, and rayon also more likely to cause skin irritation. And then to stop behind the ear soreness, make sure you find the different, like either ties or something that doesn't go right behind your ear. And then maybe change up what mask you're wearing every day. Tip number seven, take a 15 minute break every four hours and get that mask off, of course, when it's safe to do so. That would be outdoors, when you're away from people or inside your car, all by yourself or at home. Number eight, make sure you wash the face coverings. Many healthcare organizations now recommend that you wash that cloth mask after every single use. Yeah, I know. Washing it also removes oils and dead skin cells that collect inside your mask, which can also lead to those skin problems that I mentioned already. So you can wash your face coverings in a washing machine or by hand. Both ways remove germs and particles. Just make sure you follow the washing instructions that came with your face covering. Wash in hot water unless the instructions say otherwise and use a fragrance-free fragrance -free hypoallergenic laundry detergent because you don't want to have like anything in your laundry detergent that's up against your face all day. So definitely think about that. Um, and number nine, our last tip for our face covering problems is to continue your skincare regimen that was working before. If you have a skin condition, especially acne or rosacea, it's just important to follow a regimen. It's just important to be on a regimen. So a couple of tips that I have recommended during this time, because I am blessed to work from home, so I don't have to put on a face covering constantly. Um, but I know my clients that do have found relief with a couple of our products that I'll mention. Number one is the charcoal mask. And the reason that the charcoal mask is so great is because it works to detox your pores. So after you've had that face covering and you clogged your pores, this is gonna pull out oils and pull out toxins. And it's safe for all skin types, dermatologists tested, so, you know, non-comedogenic, all the things. And it's gentle enough. So if you even just wanted to use it in that area, specifically two to three times a week, that would be a great idea. Leave it on for 10 to 15 minutes and then make sure you get it all off when you're done. And these really super cool things, um, I, I love them. They're called biocellulose masks and they have intense moisturize, moisturizing because if you have the dry skin, it's a sheet mask. So you rip it open and you put it on your whole face and it stays on for 30 minutes. So if you use one of these one to two times a week, oh my gosh, it's to moisturize, heal. It's phenomenal. Not only will your skin feel good, feel like super nourished, but it'll, it'll look younger too, which is nice. The other one for a daily extra tip is this. Mary Kay Naturally Nourishing Oil uh, for nourishing and hydrating the skin. Plus it's all natural, 100% natural products and ingredients in here. Um, and it, it just soothes your skin as well as your cuticles and hair because 
everything can get dry. So Jessica, thank you for asking me that question. It really motivated me to have a great response. And if you have any questions about anything, please hit me up. Bye.